This video is all about Smart Notebook and will take you through the basic steps to make an interactive page from beginning to end. The first and most important step is to consider your content area. What do you want this page to achieve? What is its purpose? This is the root of creating a Smart Notebook page. It's all about your ideas and how you're going to utilize this in your classroom. Will it be used for reading? For taking lunch count? What are you going to do with this? The next step is to come up with a design idea. What do you want it to look like? How are you going to turn your content into a visually interesting or interactive page? Your design idea and your content are really the backbone of the creation. Don't underestimate them. The next step actually starts with a smart notebook software and it's pretty self-explanatory. Add a background. After you've done this, think about adding images or text. This can be done through utilizing smart notebooks bank of materials or adding an image from your computer or the internet. The same goes with text. Next, focus on interactive elements. A smart board is meant to be interactive. Don't forget about this. Interaction can take place through the addition of links, through sound clips, and the utilization of Smart Notebook's widgets. Step number six, the fun part, is about testing out your creative page. Go to a Smart Board and pull up Smart Notebook. See if your new Smart Notebook page incorporates all of these five creation steps. Is it easy to use? Does it do what you want it to? Now, using these steps, I'm going to take you through making a Smart Notebook page. Okay, to start making a page, I need to go back and start at step one, determining content area. For this project, I've decided to make a page that will help me take a lunch count daily in the classroom. Now we need to focus on step two, creating a design idea. How do I want to make taking lunch count an interactive activity for students? To help make the transition from idea to reality simpler and easier, I'm going to kind of draw out my ideas before I ever use the Smart Notebook software. I've decided that in the middle of the page, I want to have a tree, and on this tree is going to be an apple for each student. I'll make sure to add the students' names underneath each piece of fruit. Then, to brighten up the page a little bit, I might add something like a sun, and maybe have a background filled with green grass and a blue sky. Next, I'll have three baskets under the tree. Under the baskets will be the words hot lunch, alternate, and home, and at the top of the page I'll write something like put your apple in the right baskets under the tree. This will help remind the students daily what to do if they forget. Every morning, the students will move their apple from the tree to the basket that signifies their lunch count. Drawing all this out helps me get an idea of how it will look on the smart board. Now I just have to make my ideas a reality. To start, let's open up Smart Notebook and add a background. We only need one page, but to add another, we would click this icon. To delete any pages, click on the down arrow above the page and select Delete from the drop-down menu. Now I'm going to add a background into my presentation. I have a lot of options. First, I'm going to click on the tab on the sidebar with the color block and the letter A. From here, I can choose to insert a background with a solid, a gradient, a pattern, or an image fill. This image can cover anywhere on my computer. For this page, I've decided I want an image of a hill from the Smart Notebook database to my background. To do this, I'm going to locate Smart Notebook's cache of images and materials by clicking the tab on the side list that looks like a picture frame. Of all these groups of materials, the Gallery Essentials database is by far the most comprehensive, with over 6,000 different items. This is full of sounds, images, and interactive elements. To find the image that I want, I'll type something like hill into the search bar, and then either push the enter button on my keyboard or click on the green arrow to search. I'll now search through the results to find a background that I want. I've decided that I want this hill to be my background. To insert it into my page, I can either click and drag the image, or select Insert Notebook from the drop-down menu. For step four, I'm going to start adding in the images and text for our page. This is going to include things like the tree, our sun, the buckets, and any other text that needs to go on our page. First, I'm going to go back to the search bar and type tree. I'm going to scroll through the pictures folder to find a tree that I want. Then, to insert that image, I'm going to use one of the two techniques that we use with the background. I prefer to drag the image. To change the size, click on the small gray circle and bring in the picture. To move, I'll click and hold, dragging the image to my desired location. Next, I'm going to go ahead and add in my sun and baskets using the same methods. Now I'll begin to bring in my apples into the page just like I did with all of our other images. 
Then, I'll resize. To rotate an image, click on the object. Then, click and hold the green dot at the top and drag your cursor. Now, to add in more apples, I can copy and paste, or clone, the images I've already inserted. Or, I can simply drag new images into the document. Though you'd realistically enter in more apples for your students in the classroom, I'm just going to go ahead and enter in five for this presentation. Next, we'll start adding text. First, I'm going to type the directions. To do this, I'm going to select this text icon at the top of the page and click somewhere in the page where I want to add text. From the drop-down menus, I can change the font, text size, color, and alignment just like I could do in a Microsoft Word document. To move the text, I'll click again on the cursor icon at the top of the screen. I can move and rotate the text just like I did with the images. Next, I'll go ahead and add text under the baskets using the same method. Great, now I need to add text under the apples. To make this easier myself, I'm going to first create the text out in the middle of the page. Again, I'm going to go ahead and change the font however I want. Now, to save some time, I'm going to take a bit of a shortcut. First, I'm going to go ahead and right click on the text and select Infinite Cloner from the drop down menu. This will allow me to simply pull off clones of the text I've created and changed. I can now drag this text under my image. I can double click on the text and type a different name. My text format will stay the same. Now, I'll continue this process for all students. When I'm done, I'll right-click on my original text, uncheck Infinite Cloner, then delete the text, either by right-clicking and selecting Delete, or by the red X on the top toolbar. Finally, we need to connect our students' names to the Apple so the two items drag together. We need to group them. Hold down the Control key on a PC, or the Command key on a Mac, and select the two items you want to group together. Now, right-click and select Grouping from the drop-down menu. These items are now connected. I'm going to complete this process for all of the apples. If there are any items that I want to be sure students will not be able to move, I select the object, right click, and select lock and place from the drop down menu. Done with that step, now interactive elements. I'm going to add a sound that plays when we click on the directions and a link to a weather page when someone clicks on the sun. To add a sound, right click on the object and select sound from the drop down menu. Locate the sound file on your computer and select attach sound. Then, under the words play sound by clicking on, select the object bubble. When someone clicks on the item, the sound will now play. I right click on the image I want to link and now select link from the drop down menu. I can now choose if I want to link to an outside website, another page in this file, an attachment, or a file on this computer. For this page, I'm going to link to a website, so all I need to do is enter the URL. I again select the object bubble, then insert the link. Though I'm not going to enter in any more of Smart Notebook's interactive elements in this project, I'll show you where to find them. We'll click back on the Picture Frame tab in the sidebar. If we search through the Gallery Essentials and Lessons Activities Toolkit folder, we'll see groupings of interactive and multimedia elements. Again, check these out when you have a chance. Now try it out. Interact with it like if you were one of your students. Troubleshoot. If something doesn't work, try it again. To enlarge the project to full screen size, click on the icon with a blue screen at the top of the page. If your entire page does not show up, click on this icon and select Entire Page. To exit full screen, click on the small blue computer monitor icon down below in the toolbar. And that's it! If you want to build up your skills with Smart Notebook, practice, practice, practice. Feel free to refer back to parts of this video for individual steps.